Everybody, it's Tyler here at PNW over at Bonnie Lake checking team number 2557, SodaBots, and their absolutely phenomenal robot that they bring here to play with. Uh, SodaBots have been building some great robots, but we're going to be focusing on some cool key features, including some custom swerve area, a uh, really cool arm that I love to talk about. We'll be showing off some of the uh, different positioning processes and more coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Pat, let's talk about the overall strategy on this robot. How did SodaBots approach the game? And then I'd love to hear about you added some tread on your chassis as well, too. Talk to me more about that. Yeah, so um, really at the beginning of the season, we realized that uh, a simple design was really the way to go. So we just we kind of just have a pink arm with a um, an intaking claw. And then um, we realized that at the end game, the charge station is going to be a lot of points. And we, we built a small frame for that, but we realized not everybody will have a small frame. So, we added um, tread to the bottom of our robot so that we can lean off, we can put two of our swerve modules off the side of the charge station and we can stay perfectly stable um, on the station with uh, taking, taking up less room and leaving space for our alliance mates, which will really make it easy to get those triple balances later on. Um, and that'll be a, a big bonus for us um, and our alliance mates for when you were looking uh, from the game, was that something? Was that like a priority one to go that route, or was that something that came up later on during the build season? Um, it came on later on, definitely. We had some complications early on with um, just creating a, a flowing design, and our, our original idea was totally different. But um, after we realized the, the complications, we just stripped down and went with a perfectly new design because um, we realized that that's just how you play the game. It, um, it's just a driver game for us. We have just a, a very simple mechanism that helps us score really well. Speaking about Swerve, let's jump more into uh, the custom Swerve modules that you're using. I'd love to hear more about that. We'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, programming behind it and the actual module itself. So uh, we got Jay and Jonas here to talk more about that and uh, showcase a little bit off about the Swerve module too. Talk to me more about it. So this all new for this uh, 2023 season is our shifting Swerve drive of the i2 variant. Um, we didn't made a shifting swerve last year, uh, and we really liked how it performed. It allowed us to have a really low down, great torque in low gear, about 10 feet per second, and in high gear, 21 feet per second, allows us to not sacrifice speed while having all that torque. Um, so this module is lighter, it's faster, it's smaller, and it's easier to work on than the last module. Um, and we are running it on our robot, and so far it's been going really great for us. Looking uh, at the, you know, we're seeing so many more teams go with the COTS option for uh, Swerve. Why is it important to your team still going, still important to do the custom route? And any advice you have for teams looking to do Swerve? Well, first of all, we see it as a really good learning opportunity um, to do our own Swerve. You know, we make all of the parts ourselves, we make all of the design ourselves. Um, and, you know, that's really great to do before the season because we get so much experience and, and so much learning out of that. Um, that we can totally apply to the rest of our robot design. Um, and if I, if I had advice for another team, you know, doing their own custom swerve drive, I would say probably, um, you know, just make sure you really have the time to do it. Um, flush out your schedule because it's going to take longer than you think. Jonas, anything to add on from a programming standpoint on the sword drive and uh, what went into it from that aspect? So from a programming aspect, it's not too different from coding a regular uh, swerve drive. However, you do have to account for the speed difference when uh, with like the different gears. So we have to each module needs to know which gear it's in. And the way we did that last year was questionable at most. Where, yeah, I'm not gonna go into detail about that. But we had to this year. I extended like the behavior of an the WPI library's old module. Uh, WPI library's module state and added like what gear it's in so the module knows. 
and then it can account for that. Let's continue on this robot, talk about more of the scoring mechanisms as we go through. So talking about uh, your arm and your claw structure and some of the design behind it as well. Yeah, so um, initially at the start of the season, we knew we were going to have to extend upwards and outwards in some capacity to score cones and cubes. And we looked um, for inspiration at the design of our 2019 robot Armstrong, um, which had a telescoping cascade lift on it. Um, and we quickly realized that that would be much, much too heavy for this year's game. Um, and so we took inspiration from the Thrifty Bot telescoping tube um, and applied kind of our own twist on it. So it's a three-stage telescoping arm that uses some pretty darn strong constant force strings. Um, this is 80 pounds of force combined in here, and it just uses a winch at the bottom to extend and retract. Um, we can extend up to 62 inches um, from end to the top of the arm, um, and it can do that in less than two seconds, um, extend and retract. On the top of the arm, we have our intake, um, fully in-house designed and built by us. It uses two Neo 550 motors, and it has sets of wheels. The orange set of wheels is specifically for cubes. They're a little bit farther apart, so that lets us grab cubes right off the ground. And then the set of wheels on the inside is for cones because they're a little bit smaller. Um, and due to the nature of this arm, it can rotate um, more than 180 degrees around the robot. So we can grab game pieces from both sides of the robot and score on both sides of the robot as well. Let's talk about some of the programming features and some of the uh, different set points and positioning that's gone into your arm and claw. So talk to me more about that and we'll show off a little bit about it too. So one thing about this is we were originally going with a two, I don't want to put my hand in it. Uh, like two ways to encode it. We have the gyro and uh, a pigeon on there and this encoder right here to measure the angle and we were gonna have it decide which side it's on depending on this and then the angle depending on the pigeon. But we ended up going against that and just simplifying because, uh, well, simpler design is just better. And then uh, the gyro was also a little finicky so this just did well on its own. Uh, one other thing that I, I didn't get to do all, uh, I didn't program myself personally, is that if this tries to rotate down onto the ground, it'll actually retract, so it won't hit the ground as long as it's enabled. We have the score extension. This is just for high, and then we have a button to just make it retract a little back. So this is for scoring at mid. And then we can have one for going down. This is for picking up off the ground. And then we have this one for picking up at the station. The, yeah, human player station. And then we could just retract. And this one, we have set points for both of them on both sides. But there's a table right here, and I don't want to hit it. That's fine. Can so. we see how like a Kona interacts and comes in on it? Yeah, here. And then you just use a uh, intake, and then you hold the track, and then you can score, and then just. It's a lot faster than like before. I think the winch was on a 100 to one gear ratio, so we doubled that up to 50 to one. And so it extends a lot faster here. I can go down here for you. And then, and then. And yeah, uh, programming wise on the arm. Well, Sotobots, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us more about your robot and your team. I uh, wish you best of luck here at this competition and uh, hope to see you at PNWDCMP and even farther beyond. Thanks a lot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. 
The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.